Hey everyone, it's me RGB guy back with another video and today's video is about order independent transparency. Before you understand order independent transparency, I would highly recommend you check out the transparency in games video. In that video, I have discussed what is the problem with rendering transparent objects using the Z buffer algorithm as well as I have also discussed the solution to that problem. The solution to render transparent objects is first render opaque objects and then render transparent objects from back to front. If we render the opaque objects first and then we render the transparent objects, we get the correct order of blending for the transparent objects. I would definitely suggest you guys to check out this video. It will help you clear your understanding about transparency in games. Now let's discuss the problem with sorting the objects from back to front and then rendering it. The main problem is intersection. Now what I mean by that? So let's say you have, you have one triangle which looks like this and then you have another triangle which looks like this which is basically transparent, both are transparent triangles. In this case, the sorting of objects won't work properly because you cannot identify if this triangle is in front or this triangle is behind. For these parts, this triangle is in front. For this part, this triangle is in front. So you cannot decide which triangle is in the front or behind. Since this sorting was a per object or per mesh operation. So to solve this, we need something which is not on object level, but on a pixel level. What do I mean by that? When we are sorting the objects by their depth, we essentially have a list of objects and we are keeping like triangle one, triangle two, triangle three based on their depth D1, D2, D3. But now instead of doing that, what we want is we want a list that is on a per pixel basis. So how do we create that list now? So to create that list, imagine this is our final screen, which has width W and height H and it is made up of several pixels. All the pixels we have divided into the grid. We want to store the depth per pixel, right? So we want to sort each pixel based on the depth. How are we going to do that? To store our depth and color on a per pixel basis, let's say we design a data structure, which is a grid of linked list. Now what I mean by a grid of linked list is, each pixel that you see here is a linked list. Each element of the linked list will have RGB value, and depth value and alpha value. Now this linked list is for every pixel. So every pixel will have its own linked list. So the final data structure would look something like this. Let's imagine that there are these pixels. The final data structure would be, okay, you have a, you have a box for this. For this you have, let's say two because there are just two transparent objects intersecting here. This has three elements because there are three transparent objects. Maybe this has, this has like five elements because there are five transparent objects intersecting here. So this is the data structure that we are going to use for implementing order independent transparency. Now let's go over the implementation part. So the first step is as usual, draw all opaque objects. Once we draw all the opaque objects, we would write all the color values to an existing frame buffer. And we would also write all the depth values, right? All the opaque objects are rendered and we have this frame buffer. In the second step, we want to populate this linked list. How do we populate this linked list? So we go over all the transparent objects. Let's say there are multiple transparent objects in our scene. We trade over all the transparent objects. What we do is we first initialize the linked list a grid of linked list. There's no data inside this linked list. Now we want to populate this linked list with all the data of all the transparent fragments present inside our scene. Let's say while drawing, we are iterating over this triangle, whatever position this triangle intersects to on those positions, we would store the RGB and depth values of this triangle, whatever part of the screen, the triangle covers, we would store the depth color and alpha value of this triangle into this linked list structure. So, so essentially our linked list would have this box filled, this box filled, this box filled. So first element of the linked list would be filled. Let's say our scene was something like this. We had a, we had a triangle and then we had an intersecting quad. First we iterated over the triangle. We stored its depth color values in the linked list. Now, when we iterate over this quad for each fragment that we are rendering to, we check the existing depth in that linked list. Let's just focus on the area that are intersect. This is the area that we want to figure out the color for. We want to blend these two transparent areas. Rest of the areas are obviously uh, taken care of because they do not intersect each other in these areas. These areas are not intersecting. That's why let's just focus on the area that is intersecting. Now in this complete intersecting area, this is, this is the area that is overlapping, right? This is the area that is overlapping. 
when you want to write the data of the code onto the linked list. For each fragment, we check what is the existing depth value in that fragment. For example, let's take this particular pixel, which is this pixel. If we take a look at this pixel, then we would see that for the triangle, the depth is closer. And for the quad, the depth is away. Right, because in this pixel, which is this this pixel, the chord is behind the triangle. Since it's behind the triangle, while iterating over this linked list, so there would be a linked list related to this, right? And the first element of the linked list stores the data of the triangle. Now, while storing the data of the chord, since the depth value of the triangle is closer, we would store the depth value of the chord on the second element of the linked list. So for this area, the first element of the linked list would have triangle data, and the second element would have the chord data. Now let's take a look at this area, right? Where the chord is in the front and the triangle is behind. So the first element of the linked list was triangle and there was nothing on the chord side. When we are writing the chord to the linked list, we will check what is the depth against the existing depth in that linked list. If the depth of the chord is lower, then we'll fit that chord before the linked list. If the depth is farther, then we'll fit that chord after the depth of the linked list. Now let's take a look at this pixel. In this pixel, the existing value in this linked list was just the triangle because we just wrote the triangle. And now we are looking to write the quad. The depth value of the quad in this area, which is again this area, is in front of the triangle. Hence, we'll check the depth against the existing value in the linked list. The existing value is higher. We'll add the quad in the beginning of the linked list. So now our linked list would look like this. So are you observing what is happening in both the cases? So we are essentially getting a per pixel sorted depth. For this pixel where the chord was behind, we got a linked list where the triangle is in the front and the chord is behind. For this pixel where the chord was in the front, we got chord in the front and triangle in the behind. When you iterate over all the transparent objects in the scene, you'll get a final linked list. Each element of this grid is a linked list and that linked list may have zero elements, may have five elements, may have four elements. Depending on how many transparent objects cover that part of the screen, our linked list would be populated. In the first step, we rendered all the opaque objects. In the second step, we populated the grid linked list. Now in the third step, we need to blend everything together. So after rendering the opaque object, we had a color buffer and we had a Z buffer. These two contain the information of the opaque objects only. Now to calculate the final color, let's say for this particular pixel, we would go over the existing values in the color buffer. We would go over the existing Z and also what values this part of the linked list contains. So let me just clarify that a bit. Each element in this grid linked list contained an RGB value, a depth value and an alpha value. Now to create a final color, all we need to do is just blend these colors properly based on the alpha values and check the Z values against the existing Z values. For calculating the final color of one fragment, let's just list down all the values that we had. So for this fragment, we had the existing RGB values in the frame buffer. We had the existing Z. This is existing value. We also had a linked list where each element has a RGB value. It also has an alpha value. It has a Z value. RGB, alpha and Z. How do we calculate the final color now? So I've written down how the blending will work in this case. So for creating the final color, we would iterate over all these elements of the linked list. So let's say we are just iterating over the first element. So we want to now mix the first element with the existing color. How do we mix that? So we have this existing color RGB and we also have the fragment color dot RGB, which is this one. It is just a simple alpha blending. So fragment color dot RGB into fragment color dot alpha, which we would get from here, plus one minus fragment color of the alpha into existing RGB colors. So this is the final RGB. Now just hear me out. Since we have already combined the first element in the linked list with the existing color, the pixel has become more opaque and that's why the alpha also will get modified. So the final color dot A will be equal to alpha of the fragment color plus one minus fragment color alpha into the existing color alpha. Now after combining the existing RGB value with the first element of the linked list, you got a final RGB and alpha. Now you can use that as a new existing RGB while combining the next element. In this way, you blend all the colors together. 
one thing to note is that this blending equation is not final obviously depending on your use case depending on the kind of renderer you are building blending equation blending function would change based on that i think that was a lot of information let's just quickly recap what i said so we saw that there is an intersection problem and we saw that per object or per mesh depth sorting won't work we want something that is on a per pixel level so to store that per pixel depth we created a grid of linked list and each linked list element has rgb depth and alpha and we also described how that linked list is going to look then we discussed how we are going to populate that linked list and basically based on the z values of the fragment we are going to populate this linked list if the chord is in the front in the linked list as well chord came before if the chord is behind then in the linked list it comes behind now we have the linked list populated we also have the original frame buffer which contains the original color and the original z values now all we need to do is blend them together and while blending them together we follow this simple blending equation that was order independent transparency so a few things to note you can implement the grid of linked list on the cpu side as well as the gpu side on implementing it on cpu side is computationally heavy for implementing it on the gpu side you can use texture 2d array texture 2d array is the exact data structure that you may need on the gpu side if you want to implement this obviously creating and populating this linked list on every frame will have some cost so you while implementing this take care of the cost of your application as well if it's a mobile app where you do not want to sort everything on a per pixel basis maybe it's better to have just a per object sorting so the cost of implementation the storage requirement because the linked list requires more storage and it varies based on the dimensions of the screen that you are rendering to you need to take care of all these aspects while rendering order independent transparency if you have any more questions regarding this topic please shoot them in the comments If you understood what order independent transparency is and how it works please do hit the subscribe button and drop your thoughts in the comments till then have a nice day take care bye bye